I recently built this water-cooled Raspberry Pi cluster, and a lot of people asked how the cluster would compare to a computer, as Pi's themselves are not seen as being particularly powerful. This isn't really an easy question to answer, as it depends on a number of factors and what metrics you measure it against. So I got to thinking of how to fairly compare the cluster to a computer, in a way that doesn't rely too heavily on the software being run, and uses my Pi cluster in the way it was intended when I built it. The cluster and Raspberry Pis in general aren't designed for gaming or rendering high-end graphics, so obviously won't perform well against the computer in this respect. But my intention behind building this cluster, apart from learning about and experimenting with cluster computing, was to run mathematical simulations. I initially thought of doing something along the lines of calculating pi to a certain number of decimal places, but then I stumbled across a simple cluster setup mentioned in the Magpi, which was used to find prime numbers up to a certain limit. This seemed like a good comparison, as it was simple to follow, easily adjustable, and can be run on Windows PCs, Macs and Raspberry Pis, so you can even join in and see how your computer compares. The script just runs through each number up to a limit, and checks its divisibility to figure out if it's a prime number or not. I know that this is a very inefficient way of searching for prime numbers, but the intention is to make the script computationally expensive so that the processes have to work, we're not going for efficiency here. We'll be testing the time it takes to find all the prime numbers up to 10,000, 100,000 and then 200,000. I'll be doing 5 comparisons, running the simulation on a MacBook Air and a somewhat outdated HP laptop running Windows 10 Pro. We'll then compare these laptops to a single Pi 4B running at 1.5GHz. We'll then overclock it to 2GHz and finally run the cluster at 2GHz as well. There were also a few requests to compare the cluster to one of AMD's Ryzen CPUs. So if any of you are running one, please try running the Python script linked in the video description, and share the results in the comments. I'd also be interested to see how the Pi 400 performs, if anyone has one of those. I'll start out on my Windows PC. The Windows PC has a 7th generation dual core i5 processor running at 2.5GHz. Let's start out by running the script to 10,000. So as expected, that was completed pretty quickly. 1.69 seconds to find 1,230 prime numbers below 10,000. Now let's try 100,000. Remember that even though 100,000 is only 10 times more than 10,000, it's going to take significantly longer than 10 times the time because there are exponentially more factors to check. So running the test to 100,000 we get a time of 73 seconds, which is a minute and 13 seconds, and we found 9,593 prime numbers. Lastly, let's try to 200,000. So that took 267 seconds, or a little under 5 minutes, to find the prime numbers up to 200,000. Next we'll have a look at the MacBook Air. The MacBook Air has a 1.6GHz dual-core i5 processor. The MacBook Air was quicker to 10,000, but then took a little longer than the PC for the next two tests, taking just under 6 minutes to find the primes up to 200,000. Now let's move on to the single Pi running at 1.5GHz. Even to 10,000 we can already see that the Pi is quite a bit slower than the computers, taking 2 seconds for the first 10,000 and a little bit over 13 minutes to get to 200,000. Next we'll try overclock the Pi to 2 GHz and see what sort of difference we see. Overclocking the Pi has made a bit of an improvement. It took 1.5 seconds to 10,000 and around 11 minutes to get to 200,000. Next we need to get all the Pi's overclocked and working together in the cluster. To do this there are a couple of things we need to set up. We'll start by booting up each node and then changing its username and password and assigning a static IP address to it. We should then be able to access each Pi from our host Pi so that we can do the rest of the setup from a single point. I'm going to rename each node with a number, so node 1 is the host, and then numbers 2 to 8 for the other 7 nodes. 
I'll also configure the IP addresses in that sequence so they're easy to follow. We can now use the nmap utility to see that all 8 nodes are online. Next we need to overclock each part to 2 GHz. I'll do this from node 1 and SSH into each node to overclock it. Next we need to allow the pass to communicate with the host without requiring a password. We'll do this by creating SSH keys for the host and then each of the nodes, and sharing the keys between them. This is only done in pairs between the host and each node, so the nodes aren't able to communicate with each other, only with the host. Next we're going to install MPR, which stands for Message Passing Interface, which allows the pass to delegate tasks amongst themselves and report the results back to the host. We'll install MPR on each PAR and then test that it works on the local PAR by creating a cluster operation, which is just run on a single node and reports the node's IP address. The last thing to do is to copy the script to each of the PARs so that they all know what they're going to be doing. We'll start out by calculating the primes up to 10,000. So we'll start a cluster operation with 8 nodes, list the nodes IP addresses, and then tell the operation what script to run and in which application, followed by the limit to run the test up to. Let's see how it does. So the cluster was able to get through the first 10,000 faster than either of our computers, which is quite surprising given that the system needs to manage communication to and from the nodes as well. Let's see how it does to 100,000. So the cluster got to 100,000 in just 22 seconds, which is almost 4 times faster than either laptop did. Lastly, let's try to 200,000. The search to 200,000 took just 85 seconds, which again is a little over 3 times faster than the Windows PC and 4 times faster than the MacBook. It was also just a little slower than 8 times faster than the individual part. Lastly, I just ran the simulation to 500,000 on the cluster to see how fast it would be. That took 526 seconds, or a little under 9 minutes. I forecast the time to 500,000 for the other tests so that you can see how they compare. I've converted these values to minutes to make them a bit more understandable. So our cluster was able to beat the PC and the Mac quite significantly, which might be somewhat surprising, but that's the power of cluster computing. Now obviously we could cluster PCs as well to achieve better simulation times, but remember that each Pi node in this setup costs just $35, so you can build a pretty powerful computer for a few hundred dollars using Raspberry Pis. I also checked the temperature of the master node, which is midway through the cooling loop to see how warm it was after the test. It was still sitting at a little over room temperature. As mentioned earlier, the script is linked in the video description, so download it and try it out on your computer, and share your results with us in the comments section. Remember to subscribe to see how the cluster performs in my upcoming thermal test. Thanks for watching, please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.